Today we're on a hill country ranch in Blanco County, the C.L. Browning Ranch, and we're going to discuss the woodlands of the Texas Hill Country. These very special wooded places that make the hill country a beautiful place that people enjoy. If these trees could talk, they would be able to tell us a very interesting story, perhaps a story of what this area used to look like in the mid 1850s when the first European settlers came into this area. We know that there's a lot of myth and misinformation about what did this area look like back in the mid 1800s. Many people believe that the hill country was once a vast open grassland with only scattered trees and shrubs. And this myth has been repeated so often over so many years that many people believe it. However, the hill country is a complex area. It was composed of some grassland areas, savanna areas, shrublands, as well as woodlands and forests. It wasn't one type or another. We know from written historical records of early explorers that the woodlands of the Texas Hill Country were once very vast. They were diverse woodlands and forests containing 10 or 20 species of trees in addition to perhaps 10 or 20 species of shrubs intermixed with the woodland trees. And for about the past 50 or 60 years at least, these woodlands have been in decline. There are several reasons for this loss of diversity and the decline of the woodlands and we're going to explore some of the reasons for this decline in the woodlands and some things that landowners can do to help restore and enhance and manage the woodlands of the hill country. Some people may ask, what if landowners don't do anything to address the decline of the diversity of our woodlands? And the answer seems pretty certain is that the woodlands will continue to decline even more and more and more and there'll be fewer species if we do nothing to address the decline. There's one issue in the hill country that is very common, and that is we will see ranches, large areas that is nothing but a monoculture of live oak. And those live oaks have either been trimmed up artificially or they've been browsed up by livestock or deer. And many people think that is beautiful and it looks like a park, but it's really a very unhealthy, it's a degraded woodland because there's no diversity. Woodlands, healthy woodlands have to have diversity. And we're not talking two or three species, we're talking 10 or more species of trees. The number one cause of the decline of woodlands in the hill country is excessive populations of deer, both native white-tailed deer and exotic ungulates, browsing and over-browsing all of these shrubs and trees, preventing them from ever becoming trees, but keeping them small, stunted uh, bushes like this. There's an overpopulation of deer on most ranches, and even with aggressive hunting, it's very difficult to control and manage the deer population, but that's what has to be done in order to help reverse the decline of hill country woodlands. So what we have here in front is a young Spanish oak seedling, uh, no more than about a year old. And this wasn't planted by man. This was dropped as an acorn and grew naturally. And if nothing is done to protect it, the deer are almost certainly going to browse it to death. It'll never get up above uh, two or three feet. So it's really important that landowners uh, walk their property frequently. And when you find young plants, that need to be protected, you can carry some flagging tape with you and just pull off a bit and mark these plants as you're walking around so that you can know where to come back later and uh, protect these plants with a cage or with some brush. And this is one thing that landowners can do to help ensure that a young seedling will have an opportunity to grow up out of browsing height. It has an excellent chance of survival if it's protected from excess browsing. So landowners need to be harvesting and aggressively harvesting deer. But in addition to that, it's very good to protect these young seedlings when they occur naturally. What we see here 
is a common brush pile. Every ranch has got brush piles, uh, sometimes lots of brush piles, but there are definite benefits to leaving these brush piles in place. What we see right here in front of me here is a very healthy young Spanish oak tree. It's now it's up at uh, nearly four feet tall. It is being protected from excess browsing by the physical protection of the brush pile. And uh, so these brush piles serve as a really good nursery area, refuge area for protecting young trees that come up naturally from excessive deer browsing. And if we walk around the perimeter of this brush pile, we're gonna see Spanish oak, shin oak, gum bumelia, western soapberry, cedar elm, live oak. All of these species are coming up around the edge of this old brush pile. So we would urge landowners, if they're creating some brush piles from when they're doing brush work, to leave those piles in place. Don't burn them up. It's better to have lots of smaller brush piles rather than just a few big ones. But these brush piles can be extremely important in providing uh, a natural type cage protective area for these shrubs and trees to come up and be protected. So here's a little teepee uh, exclosure made of uh, old cedar slash that's been cut. This is the same little Spanish oak that we uh, flagged and now it's got a little protective cage around it constructed in just a few minutes from uh, scrap cedar that was just laying around. And so this is one way to help ensure that little tree is going to be able to get up to that critical height of four feet to five feet before the deer destroy it. Okay, my name's Scott Gardner. I'm the manager here on the CL Browning Ranch. And for another example of how we protect some of the trees we plant out here on the ranch, here's one of our wire cages. Uh, you'll notice this is a four foot wire cage, two by four openings. We're exploring the using just one T-post to support this cage. Based on the threat from our wild pigs, we might have to one day in the future add an additional post. This is a golden ball lead tree planted down to in about a 14 inch hole. We've added a weed barrier mat on top of it and then we've added a nice thick four to six inch layer of mulch on top of this tree. During the dry times we commit to watering these trees at least four to five gallons every week during the summer months. When you come up to a tree like this and you see that the old tree is about to die but then if you get to looking close you see chittim wood, you see dogwood, you see hackberry, you see young uh, cherry trees, you see rusty black haw, you see grapevines, you see young elms. There's at least 10 species of native tree and shrub that are coming up around the nucleus of this old Spanish oak. And that's what can happen when people are serious about aggressively controlling and managing the deer population to let these little trees grow up one foot, two foot, three foot, until they're up above browsing height. And then we can safely assume that many of them are gonna make it into a mature tree. So this is what we look for. This is the encouraging signs of managing that deer population to whereby the woodland is gonna be maintained and even restored and enhanced because of all these good stuff coming up in this small little area. They're doing a combination of things on this ranch. It's not just one thing, it's a combination of protecting the seedlings, controlling the deer population, and even planting trees, caging them, and watering them. This ranch is very serious and very committed to restoring the woodland of this part of the hill country. We want to just remind viewers that there's a multiple reasons for this decline in, in the woodlands of the hill country, droughts, perhaps climate change, the tree diseases, and there's some other causes, but the number one cause would be the excessive browsing by deer. We would invite viewers to check out our website, hillcountrylandtrust.org, where we have some written information as well as other videos that can help you to understand your land better, uh, to become better land stewards. We always invite uh, any questions you have about your land management issues and we'll try our very best to get back to you with an answer or a better understanding of what might be going on on your land.
The mission of the Hill Country Land Trust is very simple, to help landowners protect and conserve what's special about the Texas Hill Country. 